السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household, his companions, we ask Allah to bless every one of us, to grant us goodness, to grant ease to all those who are struggling and suffering in whatever way they may be struggling and suffering across the globe. May the Almighty alleviate their suffering and the suffering of every one of us in whatever way we may be struggling. May Allah bless us and grant us ease. Amin. Ultimately, may we be gathered in Jannatul Firdaus. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us eternal bliss. Amin. My brothers, my sisters, yesterday I spoke about closed doors. And I actually recorded it with my own little phone from about somewhere here. I brought a stand with me. The stand is there somewhere. And today, mashallah, the brothers are recording it for me. Subhanallah. So there's going to be a higher quality of video by the will of Allah. I thank Allah. You see, the closed door opened a bigger one, right? Mashallah. But this evening, I'd like to speak about something very, very important. Many of us get trapped. Many of us get trapped by the devil without knowing and sometimes we feel very, very caged and we don't realize that it's a matter of faith, a matter of understanding, a matter of belief, a matter of cleansing the heart, a matter of discipline that would actually release us from the cage, subhanallah. So how does shaitan, Satan or the devil trap us? Number one, before we even talk about that, we have to go back to the beginning. The root cause of shaitan's hatred was jealousy. He became jealous and as a result of the jealousy, he began to hate. And because of that hate, he started doing things. So right at the beginning, the Almighty created Adam and the Almighty said, look, I've raised him above you. It was me, my choice. I'm the creator, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider, the protector, the curer. It was my choice. I have raised him above you and above a lot of creation, subhanallah, in whatever way I felt I wanted. And I want you to acknowledge that he has been given a status higher than yours. Pause for a moment. Let me fast forward to my life and yours. The Almighty created you and I. Some of us, He's given things better than others. And sometimes, we don't realize that we've all been favored in some ways above others. But not necessarily the same way. One might have wealth. The other one might have health. Someone might have both wealth and health, but they don't have as good looks. And good looks is relative, subhanallah. Everyone is good looking, to be honest with you. But it's relative. Relative means what people are used to within their own communities and societies becomes a norm. You know, there is nothing like this person is fat or this person is thin or this person is too this and too that. It's all relative. Relative means it depends what you've gotten yourself used to. May Allah grant us all good health. I mean, I know some people who weigh 120 kilos and they are so healthy, healthier than some who only weigh 55. Subhanallah. Some of the sisters must be saying, what, 55, so much? May Allah forgive us. So my brothers, my sisters, it's something relative. Allah has bestowed upon you favor that he has not bestowed upon others in a specific way. Some may have wealth, they may have health, they may have good looks, but they don't have intelligence. They don't have wisdom sometimes, right? Some may not be able to achieve certain things. May Allah grant us all an understanding that he has definitely favored us. To recognize the favor of the Almighty 
is a great act of worship, my brothers and my sisters. This is why to think about it, to think about how the Almighty has favored you is also an act of worship. And to ponder over the gifts of the Almighty upon you is something that is a great act of worship. Anyway, now we go back to the devil. He did something that many people today do. They don't acknowledge the status given by the Almighty to another. And as a result, they are jealous. Jealous. Allah gave that person wealth and didn't give you the wealth. Well, to be honest with you, if that is the case, you need to say, I thank the Almighty for giving you and I ask him to give me as well. But we don't say, I wish it goes from you and I wish this person doesn't have. I want it. Man does that, unfortunately. I remember saying this to, some, to a brother. You know, when I say brother, you must know that person's from London, okay? So I remember saying this to a brother. <laughs> it comes with a V right in the middle, okay? I tell you what, he said, no, I disagree. I said, why? He said, because the woman I wanted to marry is already married. I can't say, oh Allah, give him and give me because she can't have two husbands. And I said, gosh, you can't win with these Londoners, right? May Allah grant us goodness. I taught him that say, oh Allah, you have not given me what I wanted. Alhamdulillah, I appreciate the fact that you've given someone else what I wanted. But I ask you to give me something better for me, tailor-made for my own situation. My brothers and sisters, did you hear what I just said? Sometimes you won't have what you want to have. Don't become jealous as a result of someone else having that. No, be happy for them. To be happy at the happiness of another is the sign of a true believer. It brings about contentment. Thank the Almighty for what you have. Sometimes he doesn't give you something you desperately want simply because he knows it's bad for you in the long term. He knows that this is not really good for you in the long term. You want a certain job. You're desperate for it. I addressed this matter yesterday. But today I'm talking of the aspect of when someone else gets what you wanted, when a door is open for another, who, when that door was closed for you, don't become jealous. Because jealousy was the quality that resulted in hatred and resulted in a war that's going to be lasting right up to the end between man and and shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Say ameen. So my brothers and sisters, he refused to acknowledge the status of Adam. How was the acknowledgement at the time? Today, the acknowledgement is by saying, Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, I thank Allah and be happy for them and don't hurt them and don't harm them and so on. That's the acknowledgement today. But at that time, the acknowledgement was through a prostration known by Allah, instructed by Allah. It was not a prostration of worship, but it was a prostration of acknowledgement of status. You know, in some cultures, they'll do this to you, to acknowledge the father. In some cultures, they might, you know, perhaps bend their knees a little bit. I've seen that happening in Africa, for example. They'll bend their knees a little bit to acknowledge at that time, the acknowledgement was through a sujood, a prostration, not of worship, but a prostration of acknowledgement. Right now, what Muhammad وسلم, has brought to us, he has prohibited the prostration for anyone besides Allah, even if it is just for acknowledgement. It's no longer permissible. But at that time, Allah wanted it and it happened according to what he wanted. But shaitan refused. Everyone acknowledged in that way besides shaitan. That was the jealousy. So what did he say? He says, Oh Allah, You made me from the fire. You made him from the dust, the soil, the sand, and so on. I am above him. I don't care what you say. I'm above him. So Allah says, hey, I know if you don't prostrate, you're going to be cursed. He says, I don't mind. Just give me time and I will prove to you who is better. It sounds to me a little bit like sibling rivalry. When there are two kids and one wants to prove to the parent that they are the better one. So they start saying, you just wait. Wait and see. This child of yours is going to let you down big time. 
and then they work hard to get the child down. Sibling rivalry is something that exists from the very beginning, from the children of Adam alayhi salam. But the winners are those who can extinguish that rivalry. It's not needed. We're brothers, we're sisters, we will help each other. We will help each other in a way that we empower each other. And by empowering another, the Almighty empowers you. By reaching out to, the, to another, the Almighty will reach out to you. By helping another, the Almighty will help you. The, the Almighty tells us through the blessed lips of Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he will continue to help a slave for as long as that slave is busy helping another. If you want help in your problem, help others with a similar problem and see what will happen. Subhanallah. So now shaitan says, I'm going to show him. I'm going to come. I'm going to lead him astray. I will show you what I can do. And Allah says, okay, for his own divine plan and wisdom dictated that he would allow shaitan respite. He would give him a little bit of time. And so what happened? Shaitan started, and this is what I want to draw to your attention, and I want to bring it straight to our lives, okay? You know, you heard brother there say, uh, a short nasiha. Did you hear him say that? I'm sorry, brother, it's going to be a little bit long. It's okay. These brothers and sisters have come from so far and wide, subhanallah. Some are here from Oxford, I think, right? Some are here from elsewhere, subhanallah. I think some are here from other countries. Am I right? Thank you, thank you, subhanAllah. I know people flying from Europe for this function, subhanAllah. So how can I, we just have a short nasiha, okay? Can I go on? Okay, thank you guys. Democracy, right? MashaAllah. So my brothers and sisters, what happens, shaitan comes to us and diverts us from the Almighty. That's his main plan. I'm going to sit for them on the straight path and waylay them, distract them, change their course. That's what I'm going to try to do. So he comes and tries with us to turn us away from Allah. So you see people who don't recognize their maker, they're not bothered about Allah, they're not bothered about who made them, they don't ever think about where they came from, they never ever think about where they're going to go after they die, they just live their life and enjoy and enjoy and enjoy, yet they know that no matter how much they have on earth, they will never ever have whatever they want because that's im possible on earth there is not a single soul from the beginning to the end who has had whatever he wanted or she wanted subhanallah it's Allah who chooses what he wants to give the people even myself yourselves none of us have have had exactly what we wanted the way we wanted all the time in our lives so Shaitan diverts us. We don't ever think of that. When you ponder over that deeply, you start recognizing I surely came from somewhere. I was sitting with a group of youth in Nigeria recently and I said, you know what? How old are you? So the young man says 15. I said, where were you 16 years ago? Right? If I ask you today, how old are you? How old are you? 15, exactly. Where were you 16 years ago? Where were you 16 years ago? With Allah. That's the right answer. Correct. I was with Allah. And if you die, how long would you like to live? Let's give you about a hundred, for example, right? Meaning it's not in my hands at all, but I wouldn't like to say a smaller figure, okay? Out of honor, mashallah, you know. Say we give you a hundred. Say Allah gave you a hundred, for example, right? Where would you be 102 years from now? Or 102 years of your age, 102 two years after that date, where would you be? Back with Allah. Do you know that? Back with Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un is a prayer that we all say when we hear the bad news of the death of someone. What does it mean? We belong to Allah and ultimately we're all going, not just this person who passed away now, but all of us are going back to where we came from. Subhanallah. Minha khalaqanakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. Beautiful verse with all the khaz in it, right? It says, from that dust we created you. You're going to go back into the dust and we're going to resurrect you thereafter from there once again. Allah says, we're only 
at a certain stage at the moment we're going to go back to Allah. But shaitan distracts us from even thinking about it. So the majority on earth perhaps would not really be so concerned about where they came from, where they're going. But those who know, they know. They think about it. Those who've understood the plan of shaitan, they ponder, where did I come from? What's this all about? What's life all about? Is it all about partying and just doing whatever I like and that's it? Wallahi, that will bring about a lot of discontentment. Why? Because by disciplining yourself, you achieve